gang is all here, and I'm so very, very thankful that we have this opportunity. We're going to go ahead and get started so that we're able to use our time well. I shared this morning that the W. Hayward Burns Institute is here with us today, uh, that we have the opportunity to reconvene and for you to share an update with us and help us as we think forward to what our work has been and what our work <coughs> will be. Uh, the commissioners are aware of the work that we've done with you in the past um, with Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative when we began and Dance Institute did our readiness assessment and helped us to think through the possibilities. And of course, that has resulted in a huge amount of work that we have been able to engage around and decisions that we have made leading to what we are continuing to build as a better future for young people in Ramsey County. And now we've been engaged in an 18 month process uh, together that we're looking forward to hearing more about in terms of the work that we have done and plan to do as we think through the bureaucracies that have been involved in the past in maintaining structures that have resulted in disparities. And our work to build equity in Ramsey County requires very thoughtful work around engaging with those bureaucracies in a different way. So we want to thank you for the work that you've done, that you've invited us into. Um, we look forward to the journey continuing that we're on. And with that, I'd just like to ask the county again if there any comments before we turn it over to you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Madam Chair, and I want to especially thank Dr. Allwood and Deputy County Manager Scott Williams as well as Zach Hilton for their key roles in this whole 18 month process and the leadership they've provided. Um, and I, I would just acknowledge that as we built the idea around our transforming systems together work and how do you get under issues that are really tough and baked in around mm -hmm. us, um, and as we thought about going beyond the justice system, it was a conversation that started with Burns one night over a dinner where we were having a conversation about justice system outcomes alone don't get it done. And that doesn't mean they're not important, and it doesn't mean you can't stay focused on it, but how do we go farther? And um, my hope is that they've seen that Ramsey County is a place that wants to push the envelope on that and be a part of that with them and with community. And I'm just I'm really excited for the check-in today. So let me apologize, because we have not yet introduced ourselves. <laughs> so I'm Tony Carter, Ramsey County Commissioner, District 4. Mary Jo McGuire, County Commissioner, District 2. Nicole Freden, County Commissioner, District 1. Rafael Ortega, District 5. Victoria Reinhardt, District 7. And Tristan Madison, still District 3. We Sorry. have a few people out there. Yeah. A couple? Oh, a few. That's you, Brent. Uh, Prince Corbett, uh, County Manager's Office. He thinks he doesn't have to introduce Oh, my bad. Zachary Hilton, uh, <laughs> County Manager's Office. Melissa Dearmont, Commissioner McGuire's office. Thank you. Um, all right. I'm going to turn it over. Scott Williams, Deputy County Manager for mm -hmm. Safety and Justice. And, and after the, we're done with the intro, I'm going to step back and make room for Zach. Up here. Mm -hmm. Probably day one. I think Zach's been a huge part of this. So. Mm -hmm. Back in my Scott with the W. Hayward Burns Institute. And I'm James Bell. I'm the founding president of W. Hayward Burns Institute. Mm -hmm. So should we proceed? I think so. Zach is going to join us up here. I want, I want Zach to observe to today. This is okay. the group yep. that's been leading. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, on behalf of our staff at the um, Hayward Burns Institute, we are pleased to be invited um, to this um, briefing for you guys. Um, I want to send our best wishes to um, <laughs> Commissioner McDonough. He was with us in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And I uh, want to send our best wishes um, to him. Um, and uh, we understand this balance of people like you that get a ton of information, you want it kind of quick, but you want it thorough, um, and you want it now, but you want to understand it. And so wow. we're going to try to make that balance. So we are going to try to be um, comprehensive, but brief, so that you have at least of enough of a context to understand what we're doing and leave time for you to take your precious time um, to ask us questions. So we're going to get right into it. So just wanted to give you, you have these 
in front of you. Just want to give you an introduction to who we are. We have 20 years experience. We've engaged with professionals and directly impacted people. When I started the Burns Institute pri previously, I have been an attorney representing young people. Um, and what I always thought is that the voices of the people who were most impacted, because children often can't speak for themselves, are actually not a part of it. And we have taken that as we've expanded out beyond children to adults and other systems. Um, we move beyond tools and technology. We at the Burns Institute believe that reform has happened over the last 20 years in human services, not in justice only, schools, child welfare, other human services departments, health. Um, we've gotten you know, to ACEs and trauma, and we've talked about the social determinants of health. All of these have happened in the last 20 years. But what we have found is after those reforms, we still have people of color and poor people who are mostly still impacted um, um, disproportionately by these human service systems. And so we believe that the next 20 year journey is to engage the structural roots of public services and to get us towards well-being and thriving. Um, we have been, as you can see, in 300 local jurisdictions across 50 states, and we've worked in three First Nations tribal communities, one that we're working in in Leech Lake here in Minnesota. So as Ryan mentioned, um, because he has been to our meetings, is that those of us that are working in the justice sector <coughs> believe that reform in that sector must transcend just, just, just the, the workings of justice. It is child welfare. It is transit. It is housing. Um, um, my good friend Angela Glover Blackwell, who runs Policy Link in Oakland, California, you know, she used to talk about justice and transit and justice and those things. And I would be like, nobody wants to talk. Those aren't civil rights issues. And she would go, oh, yes, they are. And now people are talking about justice and water. You know what I mean? And so all these things, right. So she was ahead of the curve. We've caught up. Um, and so we know that, in fact, justice um, must uh, transform just that sector. Now. I am not going to have time to go through these four um, conundrums. If we talk about them in, um, in the Q&A, we can, we can do that. But these four conundrums are what the, we have been meeting here in Ramsey for 18 months to address. And I'll, I'll just go through really quickly. One is justice, as you know, the iconography of justice is a blindfolded woman. And so oftentimes, the justice sector says it's race neutral and colorblind. So the question is, how can we talk about race and ethnicity in a system that is race neutral and colorblind? So the justice sector will admit to the race effects. We have Hmong people, we have African Americans, we have Latinos, we have Native Americans that are disproportionately in our systems extremely, but no one's gonna raise their hand and say, and I'm the purveyor of that disparity. So the first question that we deal with at Burns is, how do you engage race and ethnicity in a system that says it's race neutral? Are you bringing a cure for a disease we don't have? Secondly, is that the justice sector, the public safety sector, as you guys know better than me, eats up a large part of the county's budget. And so how do we engage the money that's in the justice sector that in some places is taken out of other services in the county and then um, reinvest that. The third is the way government is structured oftentimes is not built to fund how communities transform. It's in silos. Parks and Rec comes with their budget. Health Department comes with their budget. No offense, Paul. The other people come with their budget. Everybody, Justice, the Probation Department, the court, people come with their budgets and they all want, nobody says, we're doing a great job, so shrink our budget. Everybody is doing a great job and they want their budget big. And so the question then is, how do we make sure that the budgeting in silos gets to the families in the way that we want? And that was the conversation we had with transforming, um, um, transforming <coughs> systems um, with the TST. And then the fourth is, it's very difficult to engage communities. Usually people who are in professions and have gone to school, um, they believe in communities, but they actually feel like they know better. And so how can we structure that dynamic differently? So moving quickly, um, we see that 
um, as we've just talked about, there are two frameworks in which you can engage human service work. One is the harm reduction framework, which we at Burns say is what's been happening in the last 20 years. That is not to say that reform isn't important. So if you are looking at the jail and you're trying to reduce that population and you go to some form of electronic monitoring, that is a decent reform. That is some type of reform. That person is not sitting in a cell. But at the same time, you can't say that by putting them on electronic monitoring, you're making their life better. So the point is, is that the tools and technologies, we can't, we, they are helpful, but oftentimes they are oversold in terms of what they can deliver. And so what we're saying is where we are now in the evolution of human services is to get to the structural well-being approach. And that is that these tools and technologies can be helpful, but what we need to do is to get at the structures that, that are there, that are serving people, and making sure that they meet the needs of transformation. And so that looks at their very composition, how they're structured, how these bureaucracies um, exist, and we can talk more about that. But what I want to say for you here, for you to hear before you guys have to leave, I want you to understand this. Raquel and I want to say to you strongly, we have been hired by Los Angeles County, their probation department, which is the largest in the country, to be redesigned. The Board of Supervisors, your colleagues there, put out a, a, an ordinance that said we've tried to reform our huge juvenile justice system for 15 years, and it hasn't worked. And so we're going to tear it down and build it up again responsibly. And so they have hired us to help them do that redesign. San Francisco County has hired us to close their juvenile hall, the first major city in the country to actually close their juvenile detention facility by 2021. The reason I bring those up is when we have gone to those two places, and they have said, okay, as our technical assistance provider, who can we look to that's done this before? What I can say is, that is a very short shopping, shopping trip. You are not gonna see many stores giving what you want. But what you guys should know is, what we've done here with Paul, Scott, Zachary, Ryan, Elizabeth, in the last 18 months, and folks from the community, is a beacon for the rest of the country. Now, you guys may not know that, you may not feel it. Commissioner Carter may have told you guys some stuff, you may have heard some language, but I want you to get it. And I think um, Commissioner McDonough, when he went with us to Montgomery, he got it, which is why he wanted us to come today. So I want you to understand your position nationally um, is that what we're doing here, we are taking to those other places because you guys are trying to take this roadmap to well-being. And that is, we're going from harm reduction to how do we get to well-being. And this site in Ramsey forced us to not use words, but to come up with this graphic. So this is our little, what we call, ghetto fabulous <laughs> graphic. It's not really high tech. And essentially, it shows you the roadmap that we're going on. And I want to commend Commissioner Carter, because if you see the little diamonds there, I call those speed bumps. And she said, no, those aren't speed bumps, those are service stations. So we're not going to be obstacles. We're going to stop. We're going to fill up with gas. We're going to yeah. go get some food and keep rolling. And as you can see, I don't want to spend a bunch of time, but we can. the four conundrums are in the bottom. And we are moving with values and, um, and the way that we're looking at culture. And we're moving to this roadmap of power sharing, strategic interagency collaboration. And so, the way it is now, you can see person, family, community, and systems are on the outside of that. A lot of people who get served by these systems don't feel like they can impact them and they're not heard. And so what we're trying to do is take that little dot and move it in. These are some of the developmental milestones that we've gone through. I don't want to spend a bunch of time, but this is what we've been doing for 18 months. If you have questions about it, we will do it. And this is our across sector. We have focused on zip codes and the zip codes that contribute most. So I know that there are commissioners here that represent the suburbs or may not represent inner city, um, St. Paul. But what we're learning here in terms of those county departments are relevant there. If you were to take some of that 
into your districts. I'm sure that in your districts in the suburbs there are people that are more highly stressed than other people with regards to this. This kind of thing could be done um, in those suburban um, um, parts of the county as well. And so once we did get to the zip codes, we then brought in the city. We started out at the county level and we're bringing in the, the mayor's office, the council member that represents the zip codes we're in, the St. Paul, the, the police department, and so we are doing, and now what we're doing after 18 months is now we're bringing in community. And there's a way in which we do that, we can answer that in question. And so we then went to, um, how is this different? And I will turn this over to my colleague Raquel. What we wanted to know is when we start doing this work, most people, especially in America, when you start talking about race, you think about it personally. You know, it's this sense that race is a binary. Am I a racist or am I not a racist? I mean, that is usually how the conversation happens. What we're saying is we're talking about structures. We're talking about structural, institutional ways that may manifest themselves disparately with race. And so what we wanted to do was curate materials and I'll have Raquel take it from here. Thank you. And what I'm just going to uh, walk you all through is briefly some of those um, uh, off ramps or service stations that were on the roadmap that we have actually engaged here in, in Ramsey County. And one of the first or foundational pieces we thought was very important is for the co um, collaborative that you saw, the strategic co collaborative that we of cross sector folks, is that it was important that everyone have a collective understanding of structural racism and common language, definitions, and um, how, as Brian Stevenson from the Equal Justice Initiative says, history lives in the present. And the providing the um, multimedia materials to be able to make that link from history to the current and contemporary co context of not only youth justice, but the provision of social services in, in um, our country. So we provided um, multimedia um, curated materials that really seem to engage people and in some cases open people's eyes. Some people were um, had, uh, lived it, and are aware of it, but it helped have people be on the level play on the level playing field so to give us that foundation to start the work. After um, coming together with the materials and having common language and understanding, we also engage folks on on norms. You know, sometimes you have uh, uh, community agreements, but we actually spent time on how we were going to engage with, with each other. You know, one of the, the kingpins for a lot of reform efforts is collaboration, yet um, at, at, in many jurisdictions, at best, there's a patina of collaboration. We really wanted to be able to get deep with folks that may not have heretofore um, sat together, sat together <laughs> and really started thinking and visioning to have collective outcomes. So we established norms, but even more importantly, we um, worked with the group that took us three different uh, convenings to establish values. Um, one of the things that we've, we've learned is that the bureaucracies are very good at objectives and checking off the box. And okay, we got past that, we're, we're good to go. We wanted to establish values that were, not, that were going to help the group make value-based decisions, not fear-based decisions, but more importantly, how are those values going to start living in these cross sectors to help to help lead to the design of change of where we're going. So as you see here and you can read, those are the values that um, the group actually came up with and what we're working from to be able to help design, which we'll uh, say more of. And after having um, established those values, we actually went through an exercise. You know, you think about um, there's person, role, and system when we think about what we do. Uh, our own personal biases, our role within our roles and, and what we bring to the table of what we do day to day, and then systems, the structural piece, which we are uh, spending a lot of time on. But we thought it was also important to address, and we do think it's important to address the person and the role. With, it, with regards to the person, we actually did an activity on um, structural racism, self-awareness, and then what we did with role is, as you see here, is mental models, and those are stories or assumptions we tell ourselves that guide our perceptions, behaviors, and decisions, and engage folks with um, a real-life case study and had people start telling us, What's, what do you think are, are some of the mental models? And um, it was really inter interesting to hear some of the assumptions that people came to the table. So part of it is starting to build that muscle 
to be able to recognize how we come to the table, not only the structural pieces, but as in person and role as well. And as James had mentioned, we um, did an impressionistic as well as a quantitative uh, exercise to, to um, come to our focus geographic and demographic areas. And those are the, the zip codes that, we, um, that were agreed on by the um, collective learning community. And please understand that we recognize that families don't live within the confines of prescriptive <laughs> boundaries. So this gives us a start because we always say take a piece. Take a piece, otherwise you're gonna be wringing your hands and we're never gonna get anything done. So we wanted to be able to just narrow it down to certain zip codes with that caveat that I stated. And we understand that um, the over -rep representation for both race and ethnicity may be more for others, but this group felt it was very important to be inclusive with, your, with the large, the large um, racial and ethnic representation here in the county, thus Asian, Black, Latinx or Latino, Latina, and Native American. Lastly, um, and, and not lastly, but and one of the other um, big pieces that we were able to accomplish last year was actually having the cross sectors come to the understanding and realization that the way that resources, in this case, um, financial and money resources are being allocated and how those resources and the services are being um, provided isn't working. So it wasn't us doing this, it was everybody at the table coming together to realize that that one on the right is families not understanding how to navigate the system and having to go to duplicative services to try to right. at least get to, to a place where they're able to sustain, let alone not even meet, meeting a thriving um, and, and healthy place. They outed themselves to each other. Yes. We went through an exercise by department to say, so tell me, how does your department work? And other people in the department would go, that isn't what your department does. This is what I mean. And so it wasn't us. We just it were everybody, around, everybody the around the table. And whenever it was functional, it was because it was a workaround. It was like, well, I called Betty, who called Bill, who could get this person this service, you know what I mean? And so it was revealed through them, not us. How, and that's really a big part of how we got to where we're gonna be now. And and I and, and these were your direct the directors from your department. From your department. So kudos that it was they came yeah. to this came, conversation and, and, and collectively and with each other. Because we built a safe space. Right. That's why they come to the meetings. The space is a very safe. And brave. <laughs> So yeah. we're about done, and what I want to say is where we're going now. So what that has taken, what you've seen is a very quick process that we've gone through, that Commissioner Carter, thank you for coming. Zachary, those folks, Elizabeth, everybody that has come to, Paul, um, you know, we've gone through a process that basically says the way we deliver human services here is structurally racist, we're not trying to be personally racist, but the structures are not delivering what we need to. They are inefficient, and they could be done better. That is a huge deal for a county, the electeds and appointeds, mostly appointeds, to say that. And to say, and we want to do better. So I want you guys to register that. That's a first, right? Very many electeds and appointeds will not do that. And so then, where are we going? So now, in 2020, we had our first meeting yesterday mm -hmm. we are through 2020 we have a meeting about every five weeks the meetings are three and a, to three and a half hours long um and people are there even commissioner carter's not on our phone people are there and they're with us in it and so what we're trying to do is what's new what will be transformed and this is what we mean when raquel says values that are actually not fear-based but what is gone what do we say as a minimum we as a county don't want to do and how do we get there so this is what we're trying to go on in this reimagined <coughs> ecosystem and what we say all the time is we don't know if we can get there we don't know if this we don't know if a county can do the kind of structural adjustments needed to be able to serve families in a way that is more coordinated and less siloed and doesn't have these power dynamics that go on and I just wanted you to give these national implications. What is happening, what you guys are doing, and you have, you are in leaders of, 
It's not a, we, I said yesterday, it's not a movement yet. It's not even a trend yet, but it is definitely growing. So in California, our governor has moved the Department of Juvenile Justice, he has said to them, and moving it into Health and Human Services. This notion that punishment for young people, we can do better than putting them in these rooms and locking them up as a ways to keep them accountable. You might have read about the judge in Franklin County, Ohio, that says I'm eliminating my probation department. She's killing all those job descriptions. She wants them to reapply with new job descriptions and eliminating 10 positions. So the headline is she's getting rid of the department. She's not getting rid of the department, but she's adjusting. What I'm saying is people are saying across the country the status quo is not delivering for us. Houston, Harris County, um, Paul has been there. You might have seen that picture after the 16 election of the 17 black female judges that are now sitting at, in Harris County and they have said we should be doing something better. Seattle, King County is getting zero youth detention. Um, Los Angeles I've talked to you about. New York City, even on the adult side, the Rikers Island is closing now. They're building five new facilities, but they're not going to build rebuild five Rikers. There is going to be changes and adjustments as the nation figures what do we do if we want to try to serve people and not and keep people safe? Can we do this differently? And Ramsey County, we see you guys here. You you can see what you've done and you're transforming systems together. You're reimagining justice for you. So while you guys may not feel it at this level, I want you guys, if you go to NACO meetings or whenever you go to county commissioner meetings, to say that actually we are in the forefront of this movement. And there you can see San Francisco County closing their juvenile hall by 2021 when this board of supervisors, the county commissioners, found out we were spending $256,000 a kid and the recidivism rate was horrible. So now, what does that mean? How do we repurpose the jobs? What do we do with the unions? How do we do, I mean, all of this is what is in front of us. And we at Burns are leaning into these questions. These unions have middle class jobs. They have sent their kids to college on these jobs. We can't repurpose that job and then go tell them to work for a third of the money, right? So what do we do? And so, the, and we can't, so our position is we have to figure it out. And so with that, we'll stop and be uh, and thank you all thank for your you. attention and answer any questions that you might have. Um, and once again, um, really thank you for this opportunity yes. to address you. We understand this is a, 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 a precious opportunity. What a fire hose. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. We appreciate the information that you've shared. And I know the commissioners around the circle are going to have some things to say. I just want to add that as you showed the chart, the last chart, and the various changes that are happening, um, you know that we have been involved in this work together for a long period of time. And that the information about the work that this county board has been doing has been in many different ways shared at the National Association of Counties mm -hmm. uh, with James out in California and talking with a gathering of counties which he called together in order to share what is the role of counties, understanding yeah. uh, the manner in which we have leverage, particularly where budget is concerned and changing our systems. Um, you know, certainly some of the changes that you see here are inspired by changes that have happened here. Um, you know, I can't tie it to the time exactly when we were talking, but changes in where juvenile justice sits, for example, have been inspired by structure changes that are here, as the well wheel. as moving toward a health focus The wheel, your, you got your, your wheel, department structure. Yes. your department structure, yes. we take that all over the yes. country. People go, huh? how long did it take to do I that? I carry it in my budget. Budget. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, that is a big deal for people. It is. We're in, a, we're in another model site, mm -hmm. another Lucas County, Toledo, which mm -hmm. is smaller than you guys, is on this same journey like you guys. They're, they only have three county commissioners in Lucas. And when we, it's a county of, you know, not much. It's, a, I think the total is six million, six hundred million dollars or something like that. And they have 33 departments. So when they saw the wheel, when we, when we go to these people like, Somebody created that department for a reason. They got business cards. They got a, you know, ink on the door. You know what I mean? And it's like 33 departments, right? How do you reorganize that in a way? So, I mean, so that wheel, I can just tell you that I saw was on the PowerPoint before we started. 
is a big deal. Right. So congratulations. Mm -hmm. So again, just thank you and the recognition that something really big is happening in Ramsey County. It exists throughout the United States. Thank you for your work and for the structure that we've been provided uh, by administrative leadership and that you continue to implement. Uh, we have some people that came into the room. I know that Mary Joan has a comment and others do too. But I just want to go around and make sure you know who's here with us and thank you for being here. So everyone that is behind the county manager. <laughs> well, uh, Mi Chang, policy Matt Hill with Commissioner Carter's office. Are you with it? Uh, Katrina Ross, Integrated Health and Justice Administration. Thank you, and Alfie. Thank you, I think that's it. Turn to Mary Jo McGuire. Oh man, oh wow. Sure. Well, thank you so much, and thank everyone in the room here. I know we couldn't have done it without um, all the great work, and I was lucky, and a number of us were lucky to be here before the big structural change, and then, and then during it. And when people say, what's new at Ramsey County, I still am not tired of saying, well, we restructured our entire county, and, um, but you know, we, we were just talking this morning in the board meeting, um, the greatest challenge to being great is when you're good. So we still are pushing <laughs> ourselves. Yeah, this, is a, this is a, mm -hmm. uh, what, it's, um, who's the person that quoted that, that you talked about this morning? Gil. Gil, Gil, Gil yeah, Gil Pelosi. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are always tr challenging ourselves to continue to be better. So we can't rest on the fact that we've restructured our county and, and, um, and now there's a lot of work to be done. So um, I love to hear everything that, that you're doing. I am so grateful. And yes, we were super grateful that we were able to close our auditorium town and that we're able to continue this work. I, I don't know if it's another workshop or something. I would you know, sort of love to know what, what are our steps moving forward? When do we, when do we get to see this work? And you know, as it moves forward, I totally support it all. And I will just make one comment and I know this is a start and we're just taking a piece of the pie that we can work on and and so when I see strategic cross-sector collaboration, community, county, and city, just acknowledging that we have 17 suburban cities. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our next good challenge, you know, about how we can be a model of how we've engaged our large city. But we have, you know, we have all these cities that are dealing with a lot of these issues and, and we have a lot of diversity in some of our cities. And we're struggling with uh, all these same issues in our smaller cities also. So i uh, just uh, put that out there as I'm, I, I know you, you all um, are aware of that. But um, I don't know if someone just wants to comment on sort of how, how are we going to be moving forward. I mean, and just to again say thanks for the movement so far. And uh, just a little bit of a, a road map of what this is going to look like. So um, uh, thank you for that question. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you. I was just mm -hmm. pointing to the county manager because that may also be a question you would like to address. Yeah. <laughs> but, Ryan, you but I'm happy to have you go first. I'm happy to So I mean, I know there's a lot of work to be done. From our perspective, from our perspective, as the people that are that yeah. have that have tried to get this opportunity, yeah. um, and for you guys and um, Toledo and a few other places. Mm -hmm. So here's where we're going is what we're trying to do, and this is why I think it could be helpful in those other suburban places or those cities, mm -hmm. is what we're trying to do is match the dollars of the bureaucratic departmental services to the actual families and places that need it in a non-siloed way. So just as an example, yes. the probation officer in um, Los Angeles, started our first meeting with, we have two, mil two million children in Los Angeles, 18 and below, okay? They're just two million children around. That's from Malibu, Beverly Hills, to South LA, East LA, we got two million kids. But of that, two million, 5,000 are touched by our department. And of that 5,000 that are touched by our department, really our most extremists, the ones that use our services the most, are 805. So what we're trying to do is say, if we were to take the Child Welfare Department, the Probation Department, Parks and Rec, like, and this could be in any suburban city, and we were to look at how much money they are saying they're using to serve those people, for 805 families, I bet you we're at almost a billion dollars. 
in terms of not going to those families, but that are being spent, quote, in service of those families. And so what we're trying to do is get the county's budget to kind of, not like mine, but kind of be like your budget because you're more responsible, like your personal budget, that you say this, nope, we cannot buy a Lexus, we have to get a Subaru. We just, you know, we do our own family budgets in that same way. And so that is ultimately the process we're trying to take these departments and our department heads are coming through that. But they can give you a million reasons why they can't. There's confidentiality. Well, the federal guidelines say that. Yeah. You have to do this. We have to do, you know, and so the question that is unanswered for us, Commissioner, is can we break those silos and actually direct it? So we have done, um, if we could put, we have done these departments have done the yeoman's work of breaking down what percentage of their county budget is being spent on the people the most, which was not easy for them to get. And so with Ryan's help and, Zach, and all these people, and now the city, um, Mayor Carter, no, I mean, those folks are getting us similar things. The DA, the police departments are saying, this is how much money we're spending on this number of people. So if you're a school teacher, you know 28 of your kids are not the problem. It's those two that you're spending all your time and money on. What do we do about that? So sorry for that long window, no, no, but, but that's, that's our journey this year, sure. is can we take and de-silo some of these funds? And the other thing I will say is, just so that you know, we're not at implementation. What we're talking about is designing. So nobody's at political risk here that we did some big jack-in-the-box thing and whoop, I popped something. No, we're gonna say if we design it this way, what would we do? Uh, I appreciate the question. Madam Chair, uh, Commissioner McGuire, um, I think there's a lot, it's a multifaceted answer yeah. and so I'm gonna let Dr. Bell's answer stand for a lot of it. When I, when I sit there, it's always great to have a different vantage point while others are up here too when you see the slides. <laughs> yeah. Um, from that yeah. spot and on the roadmap what I would say is you know we're entering into that participatory budgeting phase through the two and three million dollar investments through transforming systems together in a way that mm -hmm. could have implications for a 750 million dollar system on a deep level and but there's a lot that comes along with that I mean, by by April we're hoping to be back here and with an update to the board about how that process is going but there's a level of trust building still going on I would just share about well, who gets to decide on the final people on this? And it's, well, the, the board has to have oversight over that. Well, the, we're, we're community here. We want to have a voice. And we're building trust every day as we go. And th that's, that's a part of the learning. So on the success spots, I think process does greatly matter through this. And there are going to be programmatic opportunities along the way for wins, whether it be a justice system reform, whether it be bringing parks and rec in through 21st century parks this year in a way they haven't been before, whether it be TST. But alongside that, it's like the broader change management of the way we collectively hear, but everybody else talks about this work. And if we're honest right now, we started in departments that were ready, but not all departments are necessarily listed here. Right. And even if we went to those departments and went down four or five levels, it would be a different conversation. And so for me, success has to be multifaceted. You need to see programmatic wins alongside trust building with community and the broader transformative change happening at all levels in the organization about how we think about structural barriers to progress. Commissioner Reinhardt has been very patient. Thank you. Before I move there, though, just one thing, and that is, as the county manager has indicated, this is a parallel process. We're moving down the road together with Burns Institute, motivating and cajoling, not cajoling, but helping us to change. And, <laughs> and um, we have our two-year budget process. And in that process, we're moving quickly toward results-based accountability and not only knowing what is done for who and at what cost, but is anybody better off? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when we talk about boiling this down That's to who's right. really mm -hmm. solved, right. who's really served, you know, it really is in the end about is anybody better off? And that's the process we're moving toward. Thank you for your patience. Commissioner Reinhardt. Well, as you are talking, I cannot help but think about the fact that hopefully, if you haven't already read my dissertation. Yes. <laughs> you gotta read it. Because it is an ounce of prevention, taxpayer costs avoided through preventing crime. And I came on, I 
He was elected in 1996, and in 1998, this idea that I had about breaking down those silos, um, I mean, when I was running, I talked about it. I thought there were five departments that were directly involved with juvenile crime prevention. When I came in, it, to say that it was a hurdle to get over, to get the county manager to even, he was not even around <laughs> then, probably. <laughs> 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 a glint in somebody's eye, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You were. Okay, you were in grade school. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, but the fact of the matter is, I literally went into a meeting so with the department heads and the county manager, and the county manager said to them, we are here to talk Victoria out of this. Because we cannot do it. Mm. What year is that, please? Yeah. Pardon me? What year was what that? Year? 1997. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I said, well, then you don't know me very well, because that's not happening. And and really tried to set up what we called an outcome-based program area budgeting model mm. in the area of mm. secondary juvenile crime prevention. Wow. We changed the name to ACE, so All Children Excel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the, right. idea was, was idea. <laughs> the idea was that we needed to break down those barriers. Yes. Um, and the first thing that we asked for, that I asked for, was an inventory. Mm -hmm. Which again, I mean, this was like pulling teeth. And um, and they finally did this inventory through corrections mm -hmm. and found that in the area of secondary juvenile crime prevention only, which we thought we could measure the best, um, there were 33 different programs, 11 different departments, and they had no idea mm -hmm. what they were doing. What what they right were doing. Yep. That's right. So the idea of an outcome-based budget um, and and really measuring the results. I mean, this is this county has changed so much in those years, um, in all kinds of ways. But we have gotten there. And the reason that I did my dissertation on taxpayer cost avoided to prevent crime, and I went with only the direct stuff: law enforcement, uh, <laughs> probation, probation. <laughs> uh, uh, courts. courts. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, incarceration, uh, children in need of protection that were a result of yeah. criminal behavior. Um, and it was for children under nine, because of course in Minnesota you can't be charged in that. And then took um, five proven juvenile crime prevention <coughs> programs and said, okay, do we save money? And of course had to outline all of the reasons why it's a good thing to prevent crime, which <laughs> seemed kind of, <laughs> obvious to me, but you know, when you're doing a dissertation, you've got to do the whole thing. Um, and I found out that every program that was proven um, actually came out with a net taxpayer cost saved, which I didn't know. I mean, well, that's the whole point of a dissertation. You don't know what it's going to come out to be. Now, my numbers are so conservative, it's just ridiculous. But I didn't want anybody to be able to point to it and say, oh, you inflated that to make it look good. Mm -hmm. And um, anyhow, I mean, it's honestly, it is worth a read. It's, the data is old at this point. It's from 2004. It's okay. I got mm -hmm. my dissertation, I got my doctorate in 2007. <laughs> but. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I feel so passionately about the fact that I said, you know, there are are policy makers that make decisions based on what's right, and they'll do it no matter what. And then there are policy makers that makes, make a decision on how much does it cost. And if it costs a dime, then they're not gonna do it. But most of us are in the middle. And the fact of the matter is, the only thing we had when it came to juvenile crime prevention was I wanna do the right thing. The money wasn't there. It didn't talk about that because we, we talk about um, the cost of society, and you had all kinds of information on that. But when we're making decisions about how our dollars are going to be spent, we need to know if there's going to be a return, if, if somebody's going to be off better off because of it. And I appreciate those remarks, Commissioner Reinhardt. And one of the things that I often, I'm sorry, were you finished? No, go ahead. One of the things that I often do in that regard is because the court systems, many of these places, the five that you've talked about, They've never had to actually be accountable in the way that you're suggesting. Mm -hmm. And one of the first early things that we ask is, what's the cost of a bench warrant? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And what, what, what percentage of your calendar 
is bench warrants when we sit in court, right? And it's like, well, 30, you know, out of 100 cases, 35 of them are bench warrants, people don't show up to court. Every time the gavel goes down, there's a price tag to that. And it's like, you know, it's like a car with a tank full of gas every day. What do you care what gas costs? It's just delivered to your door every day. It's like, that's just a part of doing business. Actually, no. There should be better ways in which we're doing it. Well, and I will tell you just one other thing. Um, because the first time out running for office, um, I had to meet with a, um, the editorial boards for the newspapers. And you brought up the issue of labor and changing mm -hmm. jobs and so forth. Repurposing, yeah. And, and I have a strong labor background. And so they were like, what are you doing? You're talking about eliminating jobs. And my answer to that was, if we were truly serving everyone to the best of our ability, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would be true. We're not even close. And are you really, I mean, seriously, the people that are working in this area, they want to do the best for that family and that child. So giving them the tools and working with other people across departments is a godsend for them. So we aren't doing it. We are working, I mean, we have worked so hard in the reorganization, everything that we've done. Um, it's taken us a while, but you know what? I, we are on the right track, and I am very proud of what we've done. Um, and we've got a ways to go, yeah. and we're going to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll be, some of you guys are going to be getting calls from people in your positions <laughs> to say, ah! Learning opportunities yeah. that we're trying to work on. Commissioner. Yeah, I just had a follow up. So I represent two of the three zip codes. Oh, you do? Oh. 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 Wow. Right. So mm -hmm. my question is in the <coughs> community engagement, if we're just, we're at the design phase, how are we communicating back to the community that is desperately waiting for outcomes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yes, good question. Um, and that's exactly what we started addressing yesterday, was <coughs> about design. We want to design with and not for. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we're quite intentional about that and you know, humble about the fact that we don't have all the answers, yeah. right? Um, and especially in terms of proximity to issues, as you said, you represent two of the zip codes. So as part of the learning community, developing an ad hoc um, group to come back to all of the learning community as to here's a proposal on how we're going to ensure that voices Coming. from those um, mm -hmm. uh, zip codes are included, which also includes an investment in time of community coaching. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Before we start, you know, we're not to, we're not going to just make, tokenize people and put them around the table and expect to say, okay, now you're going to help us design, because that would be um, uh, insulting yeah. and not respectful. So it's developing that process that will be part of this year's work as well to get to where James was saying in terms of the designing and even understanding what each of the structure, structures are ostensibly meant to serve and what they're meant to bring to the table. Who are um, the different positions, what that means, how to, to um, be at the table with power, to be power with power, and understand community as power at, at the table as well. And that's part of the, one of the conundrums is being able to share power. And so we really appreciate and do, um, a, again, another beacon that you all are for the country is in the transforming systems together is really demonstrating that sharing of the power. And with a concept that has not yet been designed, but you're, because of all of the foundational work that you have been doing over the last two decades almost, uh, as you have said, Commissioner Reinhardt, and, and being tenacious in that regard, um, to be able to demonstrate we can help, we can overcome that conundrum of, of not sh sharing power with community. So I, I just wanted to say that we had three, we have phases yeah. to build this. So the first was the county. We brought together the collaboration. <coughs> Commissioner Carter, we were thankful that she would come. And could we get department heads to come? Mm -hmm. Because this isn't a philanthropic effort in the sense that there isn't money being dumped right. here to do this. And so the first phase was to build a, um, the first phase was to build a safe and trusting place 
that the county folk could meet with some community people. We had representation from folks. Yeah. Now we get to the zip codes. Now we have to bring in the city people. So we brought in the city council people and some other city departments, the police chief. Now we're talking about bringing in that broader community voice that you're talking about, but we have to phase it in, in terms of um, how we're going to bring it in, rather than have everybody there at the same time. I totally appreciate that. I think it's, you know, we have to build so that we're right. ready to listen. I, you know, I think that right. as, you know, someday if we yeah, add to mm -hmm. our um, values here at the county, I fully believe that solutions come from the community, but we have to build the framework so we're ready to hear those solutions. Exactly. The community knows what they need, they know what their problems are, and they know how to fix it. Right. We have to just be able to be ready and then build our infrastructure to support Correct. the community. So I really, I really appreciate it. I'm really hopeful. Um, you know, I think the zip codes were well chosen, obviously. <laughs> they were chosen uh, by yeah. these people. Well, you know, but it is like the greatest need, and I see it every day, and I see my community asking, right, and begging for anything different. This graphic is like... <laughs> Dysfunction <laughs> junction. Right? I mean, not you, but just like, if, and it isn't, it's like systematically to access services, you know, it's like, I, I don't even know where to start and the people give up, right? Absolutely. It's like, it's just too hard. And so to figure out how do we do that so that we don't have to talk about kids in detention. I mean, that's just gross that it's even in our language. And that we go to how we resource parents before their kids get there, right? It, it's like when we went out to Totem Town and saw those boys, it's terrible. Yes. Go ahead. I just wanted to make certain to call on Zachary, who had uh, indicated you need to make a comment. So uh, I want to call on you now. Yeah, I was just going to say uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioner. Just in, in general, I think, just think about the first steps in the way you've identified that. Uh, it's taken a long time to be able to bring department leadership together and have them recognize to what degree they are part of the institutional racism that our county is. And so I think to, to, to respond directly to your question, it's almost like, uh, you know, where is the community in this conversation? You know, we've had a few community members at the table and, and there was an intention to bring some in, but I, I honestly think that, you know, our departments weren't ready to, to even kind of like have a conversation in understanding what could be different. And furthermore, is there a reason for any difference in the first place? Uh, and so the work that's been done to create a space where, uh, where everyone sitting down has already recognized like the, the the common narrative, or the things that don't even need to be said anymore, yes. are yes. are oh, at a point where it's just we're we're way beyond, we're way beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, as we think about engaging the community, you know, there's still work to do in preparing the community to be, be a part of that conversation to ensure that the community is 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 informed. You know, it's been a privilege no yeah. for us to go to Montgomery and spend half a day over and over again, 18 times, or however, however many times it's met, like maybe it's nine times or something like that. But just to talk about where we are as a, as a county, where we are as a nation, and how structural racism has kind of like defined that and built that for us. Uh, and I don't think everybody in the community has been a part of that, that journey as well, or has, has that, that information. And so um, we're definitely taking steps to figure out how exactly we're gonna engage the community moving, moving forward. But there was a lot of work that needed to be done to make sure we could all get on the same page in recognizing this is the direction that we want to go as a, as a county. Thank you so much for Thank that. You, I, I really yeah. think that there's, you know, just like you had to bring the staff to a point that they're That's ready, the community, in another way, is going to have to get to a point where they believe we're ready <laughs> right. and they trust right. us because right. they've, they've heard it all before. Right. You're going to do something mm -hmm. different and nothing's changed, right? And right. so, um, 
Yeah, I just, I really appreciate the care and the, yeah. even though this is taken, it takes a long time. It, yes. Every step of the way is worth it if we get to where we actually want to go. And I, we just, I know we don't need to do this, but we just make an open invitation. We, this year for the first time, have scheduled our meetings for the whole year because we used to do it as we went. So now you'll know if you want to send any of your staff. Okay. You don't have to come for the whole three-hour barbecue, we'll but you can definitely down. stop by and come and see oh, yeah. see what's happening and, and experience what we're talking about. Right. So and I we, just wanted to qualify that, too, because commissioners can also come. Yes. You know, well, that's the beginning of the journey. Right. But oh, no, we are welcome at the table. I want to call on Commissioner Trapham. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you for coming today. So I'm the newest one here, so I, I wasn't here 18 months ago when this started. But I think it's interesting how Victoria mentioned she ran on this in her first race, and Mary Jo's <laughs> next race, like, I ran on this. And yeah, that's, this is what I talked, coming from a human services background, this is what I talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and we are the, the suburban <laughs> yeah, So I, I think we, I don't think we should be afraid of that, the, oh, the, the suburbs, because mm -hmm. I, they get it Absolutely. more more than we think they would. They get it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some maybe approach it from the fiscal angle, like mm -hmm. we are wasting our money here. We should mm -hmm. move it up. But others, I talked to so many people who have like touched the system in one way or another. They've got a relative who was involved mm -hmm. in child protection. Sure. Um, they've got a child with disabilities, mm -hmm. and they've said how hard it is to get what they need. And then a lot of them reflect back. I just think about how much harder it is if I weren't so privileged in my position. Yeah. So the, the the conversation is happening and people are understanding. And I think they're they're ready. And I think Mary Jo and and Mr. Reinhardt are, are yeah. ready to bring them with us in this work. So I'm really excited to be here at this time. Thank Except you so much for those mm -hmm. words and the way you guys are framing things. We are stealing. <laughs> you guys are saying it very well. Right? You guys are used to like these quick like, the things again. <laughs> and Commissioner Reinhardt, I'm sure you know when you went through those five, when you were talking about five agencies, when we showed the dysfunction junction with the ribbon and stuff, mm -hmm. if you have anybody chart out their adult or youth justice system, like even people in the system get confused where it is. I mean, it is really, it's been built up in that way. And so I think that that's the, the case everywhere, as you say. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, thank you. I know that the county manager had something. And well, I just wanted to comment that if you are interested in my dissertation, I, we, I, are, I, we are. We are. I, I, I checked to make sure it was in here. Okay. Um, if you go to um, my page on the Ramsey County Leader, Great. Leadership page, okay. mm -hmm. you go to my bio and it has a link that says dissertation. You click on it and it's there. Thank we, you. Yep, thank we you. read everything. Thank test, you. Test next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be ready for it. Yeah. Um, um, Kind of Madam Chair, Commissioner, I just wanted to make one other cross connection to on the infrastructure side. This is an internal uh, wrestling thing that we're going through, but we're going through for the right reasons. It just it's a it's always a good discussion. So I think it was two weeks ago at the executive team meeting on Wednesday. Two weeks ago Wednesday, we talked about. So Lydia came in. Lydia Gurm was leading the process around our community engagement funds and how to spend that across service teams and how to make sure we're not just doling it out, right? That million dollars goes real fast. It's funny how the board allocates a million dollars to community engagement that never existed up from zero, and right away everyone goes, well, that's not enough money. I just find it to be a, I, I don't agree, but also it's like, we didn't get like a day into it. I mean, and, and so um, Lydia started working last year to be ready to hit the ground running this year on a process by which service teams are going through it. So I, I want to start by saying, first of all, departments are not even eligible to go through individually. It is coming through yes. the executive team members up through to a process mm -hmm. that policy and planning is negotiating, which is where your wheel, the wheel, right. really starts to matter. Yeah. And so what's happening is each service team right now in a core set of areas, direct engagement with community members being one of those key areas and another being infrastructure building are able to put in proposals for what are the next six months look like for you what are you asking for and then we're going to do it again for the second half of the year and so part of that will be we'll share what that looks like as a list comes together the first deadline for i think um, service team to submit and run through our process is like in about a month and so uh, we're actually at senior management team next week this is a big part of the agenda and so <laughs> But uh, alongside that, Elizabeth is putting in a countywide request from the policy director position on infrastructure building to go beyond who has been sitting at with Burns because our capacity remains limited. And the spirited conversation we had is to not take too much money to build our own while forgetting to put the money out into service in the community on key projects. 
that will be a natural give and tug. There is no perfect answer or formula for us today, but I just want to make that connection. As we think about our own wheel of the four initiatives proposed in this budget mm -hmm. around TST, community engagement, racial equity, mm -hmm. you start to see how mm -hmm. All of these are being intentionally blended, and so we keep them distinct from a budgeting purpose, but in terms of implementation, they're all, this is the year it all starts to hopefully come together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, so let me see, I've got Commissioner McGuire, and okay, thank you. You want me to go, just, just a couple of thoughts also, because this is such exciting work, and just thanks, Zach. I mean, thank everyone in this room for all the work. Um, just to give a couple of other examples that we're working on, which I just um, see every day just to acknowledge this is hard work within each service area, but then in, there's service areas that need to talk to each other, and we mm -hmm. have active living, yep. which is mm -hmm. public health, and parks and roads, and, and, and uh, active parks living. and, yeah, active living. That was interesting. So yeah, so we're really trying to make sure we're crossing service areas, so while we're trying to do, um, you know, within the service teams, which is a lot of departments in themselves, you know, we really are working, and I just want to put a shout out to the group that's working on really working with, with connecting service teams then. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then also the prenatal, the three work that is crossing all the county work with mm -hmm. our Pritzker grant and with mm -hmm. Nancy Lee. And, and we've just been, we've had a few community meetings on this, and the community is so ready to be engaged. And we're all like, we need to be ready ourselves to hear it. So I'm just affirming, you know, the need to be ready to hear that. and. And they need to be ready to work with community because the community's right. like, what can we do? We we, we, we want to be there. We want to help you. We, we, we can be resources. And, and Nancy's like, we got to get ourselves, you know, in order for us to engage the community. And so I'm affirming getting ourselves in order and and not, you know, and, and uh, as we've said, as you said, you know, stronger, faster now. You know, I mean, the sooner the better, but we need to do it right. So, I, you know, we're just seeing it in so much of what we're doing in the, in the whole juvenile justice field, in the early childhood field, in the mm -hmm. recreation field. So it's just so every, you know, we're just seeing so many connections. So Thank I just wanted sure to acknowledge that. that there's just all these different places where the, I, I'm seeing this kind of work and the need for this kind of work. So you go ahead. No, you're going to finish? Go ahead. No, I'm going to ask for your final comments. It seems as though we've made statements around the table to both understand better and also to affirm the work that we have been doing. I'd love to ask you to make final comments, turn to County Manager, um, Deputy Allwood, mm -hmm. and others who mm -hmm. may have comments as well, Deputy Williams and others. But we want to get to a point where we close out in yes. you know, good timing. Yes, this yes. was, and, um, thank you all for thank the time you, for you the gave time. us. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I just want to um, thank you guys. Um, so it's just a moment uh, personally. So I'm getting near the end of my career. And mm -hmm. when I started my career, um, it was Central Park Five, if it bleeds, it leads, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, super predators, um, you know, lock them up, throw away the key. And I always imagined that we could get to a place where a conversation was like this. This is why I started the Burns Institute. It's been a pleasure to run it for 20 years and to um, work with the team we work with. But you guys gave us the opportunity. I went around the country speaking. I go all over the country speaking, um, and internationally as well, that can we find some place that has the just, that have just put their little foot in the water to say maybe we could do something different. And um, I have to give Commissioner Carter big ups and other people here when she said, I think we can. Mm -hmm. and, and so I want to thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to come here. We call them learning communities because mm -hmm. I didn't think we'd get this far. Um, I thought we'd hit a brick wall. So I really want to thank you guys and, um, and hope that you keep track of what we're doing, for you to realize that other people in the country are watching what you're doing, and we're taking what we've learned here in these 18 months, the exercises, what worked, what didn't work, where do we lose the group, where did the group step in, where do we bring in the community, how do we pick the zip codes, what do we do about the suburbs, all of those questions are coming from uh, in those other places, and we can say, well, while we were in Ramsey, this is what we did. And so without you guys, we would not be able to do this, and this is the most fulfilling part, personally, for my career 
and it has given our office a whole um, new way of being what our vision was. So um, on behalf of all of us um, at the Burns Institute, I thank you and um, appreciate how much further we can walk on that road on that journey. Thank you. We're moving toward a close. I just want to turn to county manager and others to find out if they're final. Madam all Chair, I'll just I'll leave at the point that it was this, it was Christmas Eve on in 2017 when we thought we were being left out of the remaining deep end uh, cohort with the mm -hmm. NEA Casey Foundation for mm -hmm. Burns work. I mean that's that's the place that our work was in at that point in time. And uh, begging to not let that happen and come back in February of 2018 with the board and do a full data deep dive. I just wanna, I mean, so the arc, uh, the leadership here at this table and the arc of progress has not been linear on this work. And it's nothing short of striking to think about that timeline for where we went from not even being on the chart to some of what we're now seeing. And I'm, I'm heartened by that when I think about that timeline to what we could accomplish in the coming two years together mm -hmm. and beyond, particularly as we bring community in. And that is a testament to the leaders that have stepped up. I find my job is to simply find ways to say yes in scary moments. And I think that's something where mm -hmm. we're all in that together to continue to try and find ways. But I, I think our job is to continue to try and meet every challenge that we face along the way because our bets are proven right every time. And I just oh, have to say, oh, Paul, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's Paul, Paul Allwood, Deputy County Manager for Health and Wellness. Um, and I, you know, I, I have lots of different um, reactions to this, this afternoon's um, discussions. Um, and I, you know, I'm going to probably take a little bit of a personal attack to, to start and, and say that you know, when I first came to the county and got introduced to the Burns um, learning community. Um, you know, my, my initial re uh, experiences weren't necessarily as great. And I remember going up to, up to James to one of their own meetings and say, hey, you know, this feels like a lot of what I've experienced as a black man in America. Um, you know, we can get together to talk about the, the, the pernicious impacts of, of racial injustice. And, um, and it feels like all of the victims are having indignation and everyone else kind of sits and listens. And I, and um, I remember there were consoling words, and then there was an attempt to address that. And you know, I, I put this on the table because I think it's really very important that we have a partner like the Burns Institute that can recognize and understand. You know that that you know it's it's it can be personally you know traumatic and difficult. You know, for the people who are really you know victims of a system that has been um, you know like I heard uh, James say this morning, and I heard it other places too that. Is actually doing the thing that it was designed to do, you know? and um, and we have a we have a responsibility. And you know, at the risk of sounding a bit hyperbolic, I'll say, hey, you know, the the efforts that we are expending towards achieving race equity is really dealing with an existential threat. It's really trying to eliminate a threat that threat that literally threatens our very existence. There's nothing more important to do. There's nothing more difficult in some sense, but it is really the most important thing. Um, I have to also say that my, you know, since that first experience, you know, I've had you know quite a few other experiences, including that that, that trip to Montgomery, which was you know painful in, in ways to kind of look at the history and the evolution of um, our race-based criminal injustice system, um, and also to see the legacy uh, or the monument to the lynchings, you know, that that occurred um, in this country, that four thousand something people that got lynched. Um, um, but there was also some very uh, hopeful things, you know, um, particularly as we engage in discussions with, with our, our counterparts from Lucas County. Toledo. Yeah, and we could see in some ways where, you know, I, I felt proud to be, to be a representative of Ramsey County, because we could see where we had made strong strides. You know, we were really moving ahead. And, and, and there was a certain kind of painfulness that come from just looking at, you know, what other people were struggling with now that we've kind of moved past that. So um, there was a high point for me when we sat around, that all of the Ramsey team sat around and did a um, scenario, talked through a scenario that was based on, on transforming systems together. And we looked at ways that we can be more preventative, we looked at ways that we can integrate services and processes to ensure that we, uh, I think the exact scenario was a, a, a mother who for the, for the want of uh, child care supports, 
um, ended up having kids in the justice system and you know various child, child welfare. welfare. Child welfare. Yeah, exactly. Impacted housing. Yeah. And this was a real case scenario. It wasn't real. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and by the way, you know, you had reached out uh, before we had that to see convening. Could. See, if, you know, TSD could be used as a model for that. Mm -hmm. But it was very illustrative to me. And um, one of the one of your questions was, you know, how is this actually coming to life? And I'd say, you know, some of this is actually taking root because from being in that discussion. I came back, you know, really empowered and encouraged to start taking, making bold steps to create the kind of structures within, you know, that dysfunction junction that, that was mm -hmm. depicted to make sure that we are actually looking for those opportunities to be preventative and to, you know, to move across administrative barriers to be able to achieve that. So uh, I'm really excited for the next, um, however long it's going to be, and um, you know, really think that this is this is something that. We need to, you know, stay committed to and involve it at a, at a very high level. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I echo, you know, what Paul said, and just will, you know, add some personal observations. It's been very, very professional and uh, professionally and personally rewarding being part of this learning community, uh, sitting down with my peers, not only within the county but organization school district uh, in the city and um, you know it's been you know I've, I've been I've been in this business for 31 years most of that 31 years been you know supporting building defending you know the current status quo system and uh, so now I find myself you know in this next phase of my career being part of you know deconstructing and reconstructing and it actually excites me. It's it's mm -hmm. kind of scary. Uh, you know, it's it's energizing. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's exciting. And it's all it's all of those things. So, um, and I think it's it's helped you know prepare all of us for the work that we have to do <coughs> with working with community and, and empowering communities through the transforming systems here. So I'm going back to right here, and I just want to how helpful you've been in this entire process and managing the different balls, trying to get all of these groups together for the onboarding meetings as well as taking care of thoughtfulness and preparing agendas, providing resources and meeting those agendas. And I just want to say a very, very big thank you to you. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. Madam Chair, if I might. May I, uh, thank you. Just in, in, in my um, closing, I would echo what everyone else has said. Um, I dig out uh, some old notes as I was uh, going through the timeline in terms of our history of our engagement with, with Ramsey County. We had the privilege and, and honor to be engaged with you all since 2005. But in 2010, um, post the readiness assessment consultation that uh, Commissioner Carter talked about earlier, the Burns Institute facilitated a stakeholder retreat which included, I believe, some of you all that were here at the time. And I just want to echo, we, part of um, the retreat included uh, sharing fears about what might go wrong, right? The pre-mortem, if you will, <laughs> but also oh, the hope. And one of those hopes was, I hope that we have the courage and strength to stay the course no matter what. And you all have and you have even before then, and that's what I'm hearing now, that commitment to, con to, to continue um, and, and staying the course, and no matter what, continuing in this matter. So again, on, as, as James had said, on behalf of the W. Haley Burns Institute, it's just been very humbling to learn alongside with you all on how we can transform mm -hmm. these systems together. Great work. Thank you. Um, the last Thank thing you. I'll say is that this truly has been a partnership. I want to appreciate that you came to us, that you inquired whether this fit Ramsey County. And just know that it was only because this board had done some real deep work to unpack where we wanted to go and to head staff in a direction that our county manager and planning director, who I have to say thank you to, because if it didn't fit, this would not have happened mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. but could clearly see the alignment of the work that you are doing to prepare systems for transformation and the work that we are doing to transform our system. And it has been a wonderful partnership together. We look forward to continuing that. Thank you all. Thank you very Thank much. You so much, much. Thank you. Thank you.